Uh, hi, I'm Karina. I'm a process improvement specialist. Welcome to my channel. Um, my deal today is to uh, be the change I want to see, and that includes um, creating for myself a study guide. And uh, if that ends up being useful for you while you're studying for your FAA AMP, then great. Um, please uh, leave a like, uh, comment below if you went to AMP school. Uh, when you attended, what school, uh, when you studied for your test, and when did you eventually take your test. Um, I am an Air Force veteran. I served for about 10 years. I um, graduated from AMP school uh, beginning of 2016, like January, yeah, January 2016, and um, it's now October 2020. So, uh, before COVID, I passed general, and uh, now it's time to pass airframe. So I decided to um, put this video out there and, um, yeah, kind of help my brothers and sisters in the, in the industry to... <laughs> so I am not sponsored, and I am reading from the ASA uh, airframe test book uh, 2020. And um, if you have any problems with any of these questions or answers, I'll please take that up with the FAA and uh, the ASA. I have no affiliations whatsoever with these entities, but um, I am reading from the ASA book. So <clears throat> best of luck, everyone. Wood structures. Laminated wood spars may be substituted for solid rectangular wood spars. Answer, if the same quality wood is used in both. The strength of a well-designed and properly prepared wood splice joint is provided by, answer, glue. No other type of load-carrying fastener is used in a glue joint. Where is information found concerning acceptable species substitutions for wood materials used in aircraft repair? Answer. AC 4313 section 1B. This will be found in table 1.1 on page 1-2 of the AC 4313 1B. In case of elongated bolt holes, <laughs> In a wood spar or cracks in the vicinity of bolt holes, answer, a new section of spar should be spliced in or a spar replaced entirely. The only repair that is approved for elongated bolt hole in a wood aircraft wing spar is to cut out the section of the spar that contains the damage and splice in a new section. A faint line running across the grain of a wood spar generally indicates compression failure. Any wooden member that has been overstressed is subject to which type of failure? Answer, compression. Which statement about wood decay is correct? Answer. Decay is not acceptable in any form or amount. Which statement concerning wood decay is correct? Answer. Any form or amount of decay is not permitted. Which of the following conditions will determine the acceptance of wood with mineral streaks? Answer. Carefully inspection, careful inspection fails to reveal any decay. Wood having mineral streaks is acceptable for aircraft structure provided careful inspection does not reveal any, de any decay. Mineral streaks have no effect on the direction of the grain in the wood. Question. The I-beam wooden spar is routed to answer. Reduce weight. A wooden I-beam wing spar is routed to reduce its weight. The material removed is in the web of the spar and there is very little strength lost by removing this material. Question. Pin knot clusters are permitted in wood aircraft structures provided, answer, they produce a small effect on grain direction. 
Question. The cantilever wing uses, answer, no external bracing. The wing spars are built in such a way that they carry all the bending and torsional loads. Laminated wood is sometimes used in the construction of highly stressed aircraft components. This wood can be identified by its answer, parallel grain construction. Laminated wood is made up a number of pieces of wood glued together with the grain of all the pieces running in the same direction, which is parallel. Plywood is also made up of layers of wood, but the grain of each alternating layer runs at an angle to the ones next to it. Question. When patching a plywood skin, abrupt changes in cross-sectional areas which will develop dangerous stress concentration should be avoided by using answer, circular or elliptical patches. These patches are used when patching across plywood skin to prevent abrupt changes in the cross-sectional area of the skin. If a rectangular or triangular patch is used, the corners must have ample radii. Question. Glue deteriorated in wood aircraft structure is indicated. Answer. When a joint has separated and the glue surface shows only the imprint of the wood, with no wood fibers clinging to the glue. When a glue joint fails, the wood fibers should separate before the glue fails. If the joint separates with no wood fibers clinging to the glue, the glue has deteriorated. Com question. Compression failures in wood aircraft structures are characterized by bulking of the fibers that appear as streaks on the surface. Answer at right angles to the grain. Compression failures in aircraft structural wood is characterized by a streak on the surface of the wood at right angles. Next section, aircraft covering. When, in, when and how is finishing tape applied on fabric covered aircraft? Answer, doping on after the first or second coat of dope. Finishing tape, surface tape, is applied to the wing surface with dope and is usually struck, you know, stuck down after the first or the second coat of dope has been applied. Question. The determining factors for the selection of the correct weight of textile fabric to be used in covering any type of aircraft is? Answer. Speed of the aircraft and the maximum wing load. Question. How many fabric thicknesses will be found on a French fell seam? Answer. Four. In a French fell machine sewed seam used to join aircraft fabric, the edges of the fabric are folded over each other, so the threads of the double row of stitches passes through four thicknesses of fabric. Question. Finishing gap, surface tape, is used for what purpose? Answer, to provide additional wear resistance over the edges of fabric forming structures. Surface tape or finishing tape should be placed all over all lacing, seams, both machine and hand sewn, corners, edges, and places where wear is likely to occur. Question, moisture, mildew, chemicals, and acids have no effect on, answer, glass fabric. Question. Fungicide and mildicide, mildewicide additives are important for fabric covering aircraft such as, answer, cotton and linen. Since cotton and linen are both natural fibers, they are susceptible to mildew and fungal growth. This prevents the fabric from being weakened or destroyed. Yeah. <clears throat> Question. The best method of repair for a fabric covered surface which has an L-shaped tear, each leg of which is approximately 14 inches long, is to answer, sew with a baseball stitch from the center of the tear 
out toward the extremity of each leg and then dope on a patch. Dope on a patch that extends at least one and a half inches beyond all edges of a tear. Question. The, the strength classification of fabric used in aircraft covering is based on, answer, tensile strength or tensile, rhymes with pencil. Question, fabric rejuvenator is used to restore the condition of doping coating, of dope coating. Question, one and two. Number one, machine sewn seams in aircraft covering fabrics may be of the folded fell or French fell types. Two, a plain lap seam is never permissible. Regarding the two above statements, only number one is true. Number two is not true. A plain lap seam is satisfactory where selvage edge or pink edge edges are joined. Question. When testing the strength of a grade A cotton fabric covering, an aircraft that requires only intermediate grade, the medium acceptable strength the fabric must have is, answer, 70% of the original strength for intermediate fabric. Aircraft fabric is allowed to deteriorate to 70% of its acquired strength. When an airplane requires intermediate fabric whose new tensile strength is 65 pounds per an inch, is covered with a grade A fabric whose new strength is 80 pounds per an inch, the fabric can deteriorate to 70% of the strength of the new intermediate fabric, or 46 pounds per inch, before it must be replaced. <clears throat> Question. When dope proofing the parts of the aircraft structure that comes in contact with dope fabric, which of the following provide an acceptable protective coating? Answer, aluminum foil and cellulose tape. Next section, aircraft finishes. If registration numbers are to be applied to an aircraft with a letter height of 12 inches, what is the minimum space required for the registration mark N1683C? Note, two-thirds times the height equals character width, one sixth times the height equals width for one, one fourth times two thirds height equals spacing, one sixth times height equals stroke or line width. Okay, so the answer is 52 inches. Question, if masking tape is applied to an aircraft such as for trim spraying, and is left on for several days or exposed to heat, it is likely that the tape will answer, cure to the finish and be very difficult to remove. Question, what is used to slow the drying time of some finishes and to prevent blush? Answer, retarder. Retarder is a thinner that allows it to dry slowly. It is used in dope and liquor, lacquer to slow its dry time. Question. Which type of coating typically includes phosphoric, phosphoric acid as one of its components at the time of application? Answer. Wash primer. This is a two-part primer that contains phosphoric acid and, uh, to etch the surface of the metal to improve the bond between the surface and the top coats. Which properly applied finish top coat is the most durable and chemi chemical resistant? Answer, polyurethane. It is noted for its chemical resistance and, for, and it's famous for its wet look. Question, aluminum pigment in dope is used primarily to Reflect ultraviolet from the fabric. Sun 
can damage the fabric. Okay. Question. A correct use of, for acetone is to answer, remove grease for, from fabric. It is also used for cleaning paint spray guns as an ingredient in paint and varnish removers. Question, which of the following is a hazard associated with sanding on fabric covered surfaces during the finishing process? Answer, static electricity buildup. Static electricity is generated, a spark could cause it to jump and ignite the highly flammable fumes inside the structure. Question, what is likely to occur if unhydrated wash primer is applied to unpainted aluminum and then about 30 to 40 minutes later a finished top coat when the humidity is low? Answer, corrosion. Question, fungicidal dope are used in aircraft finishes as the answer, First coat to prevent fabric rotting and are applied thin enough to saturate the fabric. Question. Before applying a protective coat to any unpainted clean aluminum, you should answer, avoid touching the surface with bare hands. There's enough oil on the surface of your skin that it can contaminate the surface enough that the finish will not adhere. Question. What is likely to occur if hydrated wash primer is applied to unpainted aluminum and then about 30-40 minutes later a finished top coat when the humidity is low? A glossy blush free finish. Hydrated wash primer is a wash primer that has enough water added to properly convert the phosphoric acid to a film on the metal. When this primer is applied to a surface, it is ready for a top coat after it has been allowed to cure at least 30 minutes. And then it should create a glossy blush-free finish. So the difference between this question and the last question is what? Unhydrated wash primer and this one's a hydrated wash primer. Question, what is the unusual cause of runs and sags in aircraft finishes? Answer, too much material applied in one coat. Question, which defect in aircraft finishes may be caused by adverse humidity, drafts, or sudden changes in temperature? Answer, blushing. This is a condition in dope or lacquer finishes in which moisture from the atmosphere condenses on the surface and causes some of the cellulose to precipitate from the finish. Blushing leaves a porous, dull, and weak finish. Blushing may be caused by the temperature being too low, the humidity too high, or by drafts or sudden changes in temperature. Question, which statement is true regarding the paint system compatibility? Answer, old wash primer coats may be overcoated directly with epoxy finishes. A second coat of wash primer, however, must be applied to the surface if an acrylic finish is to be applied. Next section, sheet metal and non-metallic structures. A well-designed Rivet joint will subject the rivets to, answer, shear load. Question, a main difference between lock bolt, huck bolt, tension, and shear fasteners, other than their application, is in the, answer, number of locking collar grooves. A lock bolt has locking grooves in its pin, a shear lock bolt has two locking groo grooves and tension lock bolt has five grooves. Question. Alloy 2117 rivets are 
heat treated answer by the manufacturer and do not require heat treatment before being driven question the general rule for finding the proper rivet diameter is answer three times the thic thickness of the thickest sheet question the shop head of a rivet should be answer one and one half times the diameter of the rivet shank. The shop or bucked head of a rivet should have a diameter of one and a half times the rivet shank diameter and thickness of half of the shank diameter. Question. One of the main advantages of high lock LOK type fasteners over early generations is that answer, they can be installed with ordinary hand tools. Question. Which of the following is one advantage of high lock fasteners? LOK. Answer. Inability to be over torque. The advantage is, is the two-piece fastener includes its lightweight, high fatigue resistance, high strength, and inability to be over torqued. Question. The markings on the head of a Zeus fastener identify the answer, body diameter, type of head, and length of the fastener. A letter identifies the type of head, a number identifies the body diameter in 1 16th inch increments, and another number identifies the stud length in hundredths of an inch. Question. The Zeus turn lock fastener consists of a stud, grommet, and receptacle. The stud length is measured in, answer, hundredths of an inch. The Zeus turn lock fastener consists of a stud, grommet, and receptacle. The stud diameter is measured in, answer, sixteenths of an inch. Threaded rivets rivnuts are commonly used to answer attach parts or components with screws to sheet metal these are a special type of blind rivets whose shank has internal threads mm, yeah question the installation of cherry max and the olympic lock rivets is accomplished by util utilizing Answer, a pulling tool. Hmm. Question, hole filling fasteners, for an example, an MS20470 rivets should not be used in, compo in composite structures primarily because of the, answer, possibility of causing delamination. Question, Metal fasteners used with carbon graphite composite structures answer must be constructed of materials such as titanium or corrosion resistant steel. The problem with this material as a structural material is the fact that aluminum alloy in contact with, with it will corrode. Question. Question. Sandwich panels made of metal honeycomb construction are used on modern aircraft because this type of construction, answer, has a high strength to weight ratio. Question. Which statement is true? One. When performing a ring coin tap test on composite structures, a change in sound may be due to damage or to transition to a different internal structure. Two, the extent of separation damage in composite structure is most accurately measured by a ring coin tap test. Answer, only number one is true. Statement true is not true. The ring or coin tap test is a quick and unscientific type of test that gives an indication of possible damage, but does not accurately measure the extent of separation. Question. 
asked, which of these methods may be used to inspect fiberglass honeycomb structures for entrapped water? Answer, x-ray and backlighting. Question, when balsa wood is used to replace a damaged honeycomb core, the plug should be cut so that, answer, the grain is perpendicular to the skin. Question. When repairing punctured type damage of a metal faced laminated honeycomb panel, the edges of the doubler should be tapered to answer 100 times the thickness of the metal. Question. One of the best ways to assure that properly prepared batch of matrix resin has been achieved is to answer have mixed enough for a test sample. This is to ensure that you make an identi identical layup with the same cure time, pressure, temperature, and all that stuff. Question. How does acoustic emission testing detect defects in composite material? Answer. By picking up the noise of any deterioration that may be present. Question. When conducting a tap test on a composite panel, which of the following sound would indicate delamination? Answer. A dull thud. Question. What precaution, if any, should be taken to prevent corrosion inside a repaired metal honeycomb structure? Answer. Prime the repair with a corrosion inhibitor and seal from the atmosphere. Question. One method of inspecting a laminated fiberglass structure that has been subjected to damage is to answer, strip the damaged area of all paint and shine a strong light through the structure. Question. When inspecting a composite panel using the ring test tapping method, a dull thud, a dull thud may indicate answer separation of laminations. How question, how many of the following are benefits of using micro balloons when making repairs to laminate to laminated honeycomb panels? There's one through four. One, greater concentration of resin in the edges and corners. Two, improved strength to weight ratio. Three, less density. Four, lower stress concentration. Answer. Everything but the first one. So improved strength to weight ratio, less density, lower stress concentrations. The Oh, I'm going to butcher this. Phenolic micro balloons are used to improve the strength and all that other stuff I just said. Question. The length of time that a catalyzed resin will remain in a workable state is called, answer, pot life. Question. A category of plastic material that is capable of softening or flowing when reheated is described as, answer, thermoplastic. When it cools, it returns to its hardened condition. Question. The classification for high tensile strength fiberglass used in aircraft structure is, answer, S glass. There are two types of glass fibers, E-glass and S-glass. E-glass is for electrical glass, high dielectric strength. It is designed primarily for electrical insulation. S is for structural glass and has a high tensile strength and is used for structural applications. Question, which is an identifying characteristics of acrylic plastic? Answer. Zinc chloride will have no effect, but it causes cellulose acetate plastic to turn milky. Question. 
superficial scars, scratches, surface abrasion, or rain erosion on fibrolash laminates can generally be repaired by applying answer one or more coats of suitable resin room temperature catalyzed to the surface question the classification for fiberglass reinforcement material that has high resisti resistivity and is the most common is answer e glass Question. A potted compound repair on honeycomb can usually be made on damage less than, answer, one inch in diameter. Question. Composite fabric material is considered to be the strongest in what direction? Answer. Warp. The threads that run the length of a piece of fabric are called the warp threads, and they are generally stronger than the woof, weft, or fill threads that run across the material. For this reason, it's the strongest. Question. What reference tool is used to determine how the fiber is to be oriented for a particular ply of fabric? Answer, warp clock or compass. It is a template with eight arms, 45 degrees apart, that allow you to orient the warp threads. Question, the strength and stiffness for a properly constructed composite buildup depends primarily on, answer, the orientation of the plies to the load direction. Question, which fiber to resin percentage ratio for advanced composite wet layups is generally considered the best for strength? Answer, 6040. Fibers that carry strength in a composite structure and a 60-40 fiber to resin ratio. Question. What is the material layer used within the vacuum bag pressure system to absorb excessive excess resin during curing called? Answer. Bleeder. This is the absorbent material that is squeezed from the plies. Question. <clears throat> Proper pre-preg composite layup curing is generally com accomplished by answer, applying external heat, applying pressure. Pre-impregnated materials or pre-pregs are fabrics uniformly impregnated with the matrix resin. Question. When repairing large flat surfaces with polyester resin, warping of the surface is likely to occur. One method of, of reducing the amount of warpage is to answer, use short strips of fiberglass in the bonded repair. Question. When making repairs to fiberglass, Cleaning of the area to be repaired is essential for a good bond. The final cleaning should be made using answer MEK, which is methyl ethyl ketone. Question. When necessary, what type of cutting fluids is usually acceptable for machining composite laminates? Answer. Water. Only water. Question. Fiberglass laminate damage not exceeding the first layer or ply can, re can be repaired by Answer. Filling with a putty consisting of a compatible resin and clean, short glass fibers. After that, you would sand it smooth. Question. 
Fiberglass damage that extends completely through a laminated sandwich structure. Answer, may be repaired. According to AC 4313-1B, fiberglass damage that goes completely through the laminated sandwich structure can be repaired by using either a stepped joint or a scarf, scarfed joint repair. Question. Fiberglass laminate damage that exceeds completely through one facing and into the core. Answer. Requires that requires the replacement of the damaged core and facing. Question. Repairing advanced composites using materials and the techniques traditionally used for fiberglass repairs is likely to result in answer an unairworthy repair. Modern composite materials use materials, procedures, and special precautions that are different from those used with conventional aircraft fiberglass. Question, the preferred way to make a permanent repair on composite is by, answer, laminating on new repair plies. Mm. Question, which of the following when added to wet resins Provide strength for the repair of damaged fastener holes in composite panels. Answer. Flox, F-L-O-X, chopped fibers. Chopped fibers may be any type of fiber cut to length of one-fourth to half inch. Flox is the fuzzy fibers taken from the strands of fabric. Question. The part of the replacement honeycomb cord that must line up with the adjacent original is the answer r ribbon direction. Question. Which of the following are generally characteristics of aramid fibers? Kevlar composites. Answer. High tensile strength and flexibility. Kevlar is noted for its flexibility and tensile strength. It does not conduct electricity and does not cause aluminum to corrode when it's held in contact with it. Question. Which of the following are generally characteristics of carbon graph graphite fiber composites? Answer. Stiffness, high compressive strength, and corrosive effect in contact with aluminum. Question, if an aircraft's transparent plastic enclosure exhibits fine cracks, which may be extended in a network over or under the surface or through the plastic, the plastic is said to be, answer, crazing. Question, when installing transparent plastic enclosures which are the retain which are retained by bolts extending through the plastic material and self-locking nuts the nuts should be answer tightened to a firm fit then backed off one full turn this insulation procedure procedure allows the plastic material to expand and contract without placing it under stress Question. If a new safety belt is to be installed in an aircraft, the belt must conform to the strength requirements in which the document answer TSO C 22. Question. Which is considered good practice concerning the installation of acrylic plastic? Answer. When rivets are used, adequate space or other satisfactory means to prevent excessive tightening of the frame to the plastic should be provided. <sighs> Question. The coefficient of expansion of most plastic enclosures materials is answer greater than bolt steel and aluminum. Question. If no scratches are visible after the transparent plastic enclosure materials have been cleaned, 
Their surfaces should be, answer, covered with a thin coat of wax. Question. Cabin, uphol cabin upholstery materials installed in current standard category airplanes must be, answer, at least flame resistant. This is found in 14 CFR 23.2325. Question, what is the most common method of cementing transparent plastics? Answer, soak method. <clears throat> Question, what type of bit should be used to drill holes in plexiglass? Answer, a specially modified twist drill. The modified, it should be modified to a 60 degree tip angle, the cutting edge ground to a zero rank angle, and the back lip clearance angle increased to 12% or 12 degrees to 15 degrees. If I said uh, percent instead of degrees before, please ignore that. Um, question. Which of the following drill bit types work best when drilling an aramid fiber, which is Kevlar, composite laminate? Answer, carbide W point, which is better known as brand point bit. Keeps the hole free of the fuzzy fibers that other drilling methods leave behind in the hole. Question. What is the purpose of a gusset or gusset plate used in the construction and repair of aircraft structures? Answer, to join and reinforce intersection, intersecting structural members. So these are used to carry stress from one member to another at the point the members join each other. Question, select a Question. Select the alternative which best describes the function of the flute section of a twist drill. Answer. Forms the cutting edge of the drill point. Question. How many MS20470 AD 4 6 rivets will be required to attach a 10 inch? by 5 inch plate using a single row of rivets, minimum edge distance, and 4D spacing? Answer, 56. Question. On a semi-monocoque fuselage, the skin is reinforced by longitudinal structure members called, answer, Longerons and stringers. Question. Shallow scratches in sheet metal may be repaired by answer burnishing. It's a process which a smooth smooth tool is used to force the raised material back into the scratch. Question. What should be the included angle of a twist drill for soft metals? Answer, 90 degrees. That's 45 degrees either side of center is suitable. For normal metals, it's 118 degrees, which is 59 degrees on either side of center. With the question, when comparing the machining technique for stainless steel sheet material to the loose to those for aluminum alloy sheet it is normally considered good practice to drill the stainless steel at a answer lower speed with more pressure applied to the drill question a single lap sheet splice is to be used to repair a section of damaged aluminum skin if a double row of 1 8 inch rivets is used, the minimum allowable overlap will be, answer, 13 sixteenths of an inch. Question. 
What is the minimum edge distance allowed for aluminum alloy single lap sheet splices containing a single row of rivets as compared to a joint with multiple rows, all rivets being equal in diameter? Answer, the minimum edge distance for the single row is equal to that for the multiple row. So let's say this distance is two and then times the diameter of the rivet being used. Question, which statement is true regarding the inspection of a stressed skin metal wing assembly known to have been critically loaded? Answer, if genuine rivet tipping has occurred, groups of consecutive rivet heads will be tipped in the same direction. Question. What is the minimum edge distance for an aircraft rivet? Answer. Two times the diameter of the rivet shank. Question. When drilling stainless steel, the drill used should have included angle of? Answer. 140 degrees and turn at a low speed. This <clears throat> question What is the minimum spacing for a single row of aircraft rivets? Answer Three times the diameter of rivet shanks. I'm calling it. See you in the next video. Thanks for, yeah, all that.